Hi, this is David with NTI Online. Today I'm going to walk you through cleaning your NTI water tube boiler. The process that I'm going to go through is going to remain the same whether you have this water tube boiler or other similar models such as the larger TRX 199 or 199 Combi or you may have our LX product or even an older TI product. Once we get inside the chamber, the cleaning process will be the same. However, disassembly may differ depending on the model you have. To perform a cleaning, you're going to need several tools. You should always have a manometer available. You want to have a working combustion analyzer with you. You'll need some source of water. Now this can either be with a spray bottle, a pump up sprayer such as a garden sprayer, and one that actually works really well and that most people have access to is take an old water bottle, punch a hole in the top, and this makes a good uh, method for squeezing and squirting water through the combustion chamber, which you're going to need. You'll also want some form of scrub brush, preferably a plastic bristle brush, something like what you see here. This is the NTI cleaning brush. It's designed to go on a drill and was specifically designed to work with water tube style heat exchangers. You'll also want something like the NTI cleaning tool, and this is for getting down and scraping in between the tubes and the coils in the water tube boilers. And that's because dirt will sometimes get pushed down in there and the flue gas has to pass through in order for the boiler to breathe. This ensures that you're getting that passageway completely clear. Other tools you're gonna to require are what you need to disassemble the boiler or disconnect the gas line if you have something like a TI series boiler. On the TRX that you see in front of you, or the larger TRX, uh, you don't require uh, disassembly of the gas line. You can actually do it all from within the boiler. So let's get started. Before beginning this procedure, disconnect power from the appliance, open up the control board, and it's always good to have a little bit of paper towel or a rag available. Uh, as you disassemble this, you may potentially splash some water around, so it's a good idea just to protect the electronics. Uh, this boiler is dry, so I'll set this to one side for the moment. With your TRX product, I like to disconnect the spark transformer, pull this wire harness down and out of my way, and that's just so that it's not interfering with me when I'm working, and it gives me more room to do my job. We're going to disconnect the flame rod, unplug the igniter, and usually I would remove both the flame rod and igniter with the burner door as I disassemble it. You'll need to remove the junction box in the front here. So that can be done by snapping the clip underneath. And again, just letting that fall to one side. And then you can take off the muffler assembly. This is there to silence the noise of the combustion fan when it's running. When you take this off, it's always important to make sure you inspect inside here. If there's a large amount of dirt, dust, or debris, uh, or of course if you find the uh, hornet's nest in there, you'll want to make sure you clean that out before you proceed. Even though these appliances draw cabinet air, we have had cases where small animals or bugs especially have made it into this box. So it's a good idea to take it apart and clean it just to make sure. Next, we'll take off our plastic clip here. And now we're ready to disconnect the gas light and remove the burner door. Another thing to inspect is inside the Venturi here, run your finger in there, look for dirt, debris, heavy dust, uh, signs of moisture. If the plastic is eroding or deteriorating in any way, it's a good indication that maybe you're recycling flue gases or that something else needs to be looked at to prevent further damage. Next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the gas line. To do that, you're just going to loosen off the brass nut that attaches to the venturi. Make sure you don't lose these little gaskets. They can sometimes disappear against the black color of the cabinet. We're going to disconnect the lower line here. and We're, not, we're just going to loosen that up so that we can move this gas line out of our way. Now take your 10 millimeter wrench and you're gonna remove each of your burner door studs. Try not to drop those, they have a tendency to get lost.
Now carefully remove the burner door, and as you're pulling it off, just try not to let it drop too much. Uh, the reason for that is you don't want one of these studs to tear into this refractory and damage it. Once you have the burner assembly out, it's a good idea to hold this part up to the light and you should be able to see pinholes of light through here. If you cannot, you may need to take this to the kitchen sink and rinse it out with water. And when I say wash it with water, I do mean to rinse water through this both directions till it runs clean and clear. Try not to get the refractory too wet. And before you start rinsing water through this, it's a good idea to remove the blower and set it to one side. In most cases, that will not be necessary, but it's always good to inspect because a film of dust will build up over the years, dead mosquitoes, and eventually they can plug up your burner and cause combustion issues. Inspect your flame rod and your igniter. So you want to make sure that the gap is about 3 16 to 1 quarter of an inch. They should be nice and straight and not twisted, warped, or bent in any direction. Here you can see what they look like up against the burner, so you can see what good igniters and flame rods should look like. And for the most part, unless you're having ignition problems or bad flame signal, I don't recommend touching these. If they're not broken, don't try and fix them. If they're getting to the point where they're three, four, or five years old, it may be time just to replace them and put in fresh ones. For the refractory, a very important thing is look for staining along the bottom edge here. It indicates that potentially you've had water flooding the combustion chamber. That can cause combustion issues. It can also cause this refractory to fail. And then of course, it also helps you find and point out problems that may be existing um, before you got there to service it. The gasket here is reusable. Give it a push, make sure it's still compliant and still kind of rubbery. If it feels hard and plasticky, it may be time to replace that. And before you reassemble your boiler, it's a good idea just to give this a good rub off with a, a clean rag, just to get rid of any larger particles of dirt that might be stuck to it so that you get a good seal. Now that we've finished with our burner door, we want to address the combustion chamber. You'll want to get a cleaning disc like this. This is the NTI cleaning disc size specifically for this device. And the whole purpose of this disc is to prevent you from hitting the refractory in the back and potentially doing damage to it. Even a brush that's relatively soft like this, when it's pressed up against the refractory, will scrape away and damage it. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to scrape with your brush and you want to put plenty of water through here. Um, so again, if I was using the water bottle, I'd put a small hole in there and squeeze lots and lots of water through. You're trying to get the water 360 degrees, you want to get it up through the tubes, down through the sides of the tubes, and then down through the bottom. Any dirt or debris that you're knocking loose will tend to lay in the bottom of this, this heat exchanger. And what the water is doing is providing enough flow to rinse it out down into your condensate drain. So you're going to scrub and flush until you think you've got it clean. Take something like the NTI cleaning tool, and what you want to be able to do is this needs to slot in between the tubes. So if you look at the depth that that goes in, it fits in there between the tubes about an inch and a half. That's the full depth of the tube. That needs to be clean right to the outside of the boiler. So this tool was developed because the old credit card method no longer works because the tubing gaps are a little smaller. This is about a 26 gauge piece of steel and you need something around that thin to get in between the tubes. And keep in mind that if you notice I can't go any further, there are dividers every few inches, so you'll have to remove the tool and insert it next to the other divider. Once you've scraped all around and you're sure you've got all the dirt out, I like to take my cell phone, hold it at the top of the chamber, take a photo with the flash down between the tubes just to verify that it is indeed clean. You can also do that sideways and straight up. Once you're happy that everything's clean, remove your cleaning disc. And you have a couple of choices. You've already rinsed this thoroughly and scrubbed it. Uh, one thing that is a best practice, but not always required, is to take a white household vinegar, soak this down, give it a good coat or spray with white household vinegar, let it sit for five or 10 minutes, give it a very quick rinse out, and then reassemble your boiler. What that will do is help pickle or protect the steel and make it more corrosion resistant going forward so you're less likely to see damage from corrosion. Once you're content the chamber's clean, we can now reassemble the boiler.
reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. However, there are a couple of little tips that I like to give people. It just makes life a bit easier if you do things in this order. Loosely put on a couple of burner door nuts just to hold the door in place. And what I like to do at this point is reconnect the gas line. Sometimes due to fitment issues, these will not be perfectly aligned. So what this does is it gives you a chance to connect this while everything's still kind of loose and you can make a nice easy fit. Don't completely snug it up, but just get it on there finger tight. Finish installing the four burner door nuts or five or six if you have a bigger boiler. You're gonna snug each of these down. The official torque spec is about five pound feet or 60 inch pounds. Uh, I don't expect you to have a torque wrench, but the main thing to keep in mind is that you're not going to be hauling off and, and really tightening these down. You want to keep turning them until you start to feel some resistance. And once you feel a bit of resistance, give it about a, an eighth or a quarter turn, and then it should be snug enough. It's always a good idea to do this in a crisscross pattern, the same as if you were tightening lug nuts on a car. Once you feel it tight, give it a little snug. And I like to just double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Now that you've tightened down your burner door nuts, we're going to reconnect all of our wires. So we'll start with our blower here. Hook up the 120 volt. Reconnect our spark transformer. Make sure that's nice and snug. Hook the ground wire up. On the TRX series, you've got a barrel style connector that reaches up in the back corner here and slips onto the spark transformer. Give that a jiggle, make sure you've got a decent connection there. You can now reconnect your flame rod. Your ground wire. When reassembling, make sure to put the plastic clamp on first. That fits on there. It's got a couple little clips for holding these wires, so you can use those. And then you'll want to reinstall the muffler assembly. The muffler is just a friction fit, so you're going to push that back on there like that. Reconnect your junction box, and the way I found this works best is there's two hooks on this side. You put those in first and then close it to snap it together. Quick double check to make sure all our wires are good. And at this point we can proceed with the next step. The next step is going to be to go to your gas valve remove this little test plug and you're going to loosen the bottom test port here. This is a Torx T10. Loosen it off a couple of turns. Take your manometer. You're going to stick the tubing over the test port. Take a static gas pressure reading. You're also going to take another pressure reading once the boiler's up and running. I forgot to mention earlier, but after you finish cleaning the inside of the combustion chamber, it's a good idea to clean this trap. To do that, you can reach underneath and there's a plastic clip like this that you have to remove first. This one's been unscrewed, so it's a little bit loose. But once you've done that, you can grab the bottom of the trap. And this is a quarter turn release. So you see these little hooks here. You just give it a little turn, pull it down. All the dirt that you've just washed out will be laying in this trap here. Uh, so you'll want to make sure you rinse this out. And word to the wise, when you remove this trap, there's a little bit of water trapped up here. It's always going to splash out, so you might want to be prepared with either a rag or a little uh, cup, something to catch some of that water. Once that's clean, you're going to reassemble it. So you just push that back in, give it a quarter turn to lock it, and then you snap the locking clip back on. Now that we've taken care of that, we can do our combustion test. Fire up your analyzer, remove the test port plug in the top center of the boiler. You'll need a Torx T20 to do that.
pull out the test port, set it to one side, watch that you don't lose the screw. And on these boilers, the test port tends to be relatively small. And if your analyzer is a larger wand like this one, sometimes they don't fit snugly in the test port. So it's a good idea to push it in as far as you can. Make sure that your locking sleeve is firmly sealed up against the test port. And that's to ensure that we don't get any unnecessary or unwanted leakage. If you're having trouble getting a good seal here, which might be indicated by difficulty setting your combustion, it's not a bad idea to wrap that with a rag or even a piece of tape if you have to, to make sure you get a good strong seal. Any air leakage at all will throw off your readings. The next step will be to run the boiler at high fire, set your combustion if you need adjustments, run it to low fire, again set your combustion if it needs adjustments. I'll do a separate video on setting combustion. However, you'll want to make sure that's correct. Check the fuel type, propane or natural. Now, other things you're going to do before you leave the job site is you want to look at all the air vents that are on the system. So on this boiler, there's an air vent in back here. There's, there may be air vents in your system. You're going to have a relief valve. Uh, you should check that. Make sure none of these things are dribbling. Make sure they're all in good condition. Uh, if you have a low water cutoff, it's a good idea to test that before you leave the job site. And it never hurts to ask the homeowner if anything unusual has happened or if there's anything you should be aware of before you do the service just so they can give you a heads up and maybe you can prevent a future service call. Once you're content that everything is properly set and cleaned, at this point you can put the boiler back together and move on to your next job. Thanks for visiting NTI online. My name is David and as always if you have questions please contact our technical support department at 800-688-2575. Thank you.